Vanity of vanities, said the preacher, all is vanity. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Shalom Israel, I am Brother Simeon Israel and welcome to today's Bible lesson. First and foremost, I'd like to start by giving all praises to the almighty power of my forefathers, the almighty power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today's lesson is titled as, Are You a Righteous Israelite? In today's lesson, we'll examine the importance of the dietary laws of the Most High. This is part one of a three-part series on righteous living. We'll explore today's topic by looking at the following points. Firstly, why should Israelites keep the dietary law? Secondly, why should the heathen keep the dietary law? And finally, what is the righteous diet according to the law? Why should Israelites keep the dietary law? The lesson entitled, Should Israelite Captives Seek Peace or Conflict, elaborates on the deliverance of the Israelites that wait patiently and peacefully upon the Most High. At that time, Israelites scattered among the heathen that are found in the Book of Life will be delivered into the wilderness by the archangel, Michael. After that, the heathen will be gathered for their own judgment. The wicked heathens shall be devoured with the fire of the Most High's jealousy. Indeed, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, we see the following. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was, since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. As the general of the army of the Lord, the archangel Michael will ensure the safe deliverance of all the Israelites scattered among the heathen nations, even the wicked, pork-eaten, crab-eaten, lobster-eaten, unrepentant Israelites will be delivered safely to the wilderness. Moreover, Michael and the Lord's army's mission is to separate and gather the bloodline descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even the least among them that includes the wicked Israelites that are found in the Book of Life. We see this in Amos chapter 9 verses 9 to 10, which reads thus, For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake, nor prevent us. And when the wicked Israelites realize that the calamity created by the Lord's army is not affecting them, they will think themselves to be in good case, saying, The evil shall not overtake, nor prevent us. So the wicked, unrepentant Israelites will keep eating their juicy barbecue pork sausages as they watch the heathen fall before their eyes. A thousand shall fall at their side, and ten thousand at their right hand, but it shall not come nigh unto them. And they'll be thinking, this calamity is not for us, so stay calm and keep sinning. But the Most High will be standing ready in the wilderness to purge the wicked from the congregation of Israel. This will occur after the Most High meets us face to face in the wilderness, plays with us, and again brings us under the bond of the covenant, just like in the days of ancient Egypt. We see this in Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 35 to 37, which reads as follows, And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, said the Lord God, and I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Once the Most High causes all the congregation to come under the bond of the covenant, even the wicked, then the penalty for all grievous sins will be death. Continuing at verse 38, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. 
Indeed, those that rebel against the covenant of the Most High by disobeying any of his laws will be purged in the wilderness. The remnant will not contain any wicked Israelites. Only those that keep all the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High will be part of the remnant. This includes obeying his dietary laws. Indeed, only those that obey the dietary laws and all other commandments of the Most High will be comforted in the Holy Land. We see this in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 13, which reads thus, The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Furthermore, in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 14, we see the following, As one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like a herb, and the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants, and his indignation toward his enemies. The righteous remnant that receive mercy and make it out of the wilderness and into the holy land will be comforted, and they will know the love, power, and dominion of the Most High. But the enemies of the Most High will know his indignation. Why should the heathen keep the dietary law? Many of the enemies of the Most High that are subject to the indignation of the Most High will be consumed by the flames of fire from the chariots of the Most High when he returns to gather the heathen and judge them. Many of the heathen will fall. We see this in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 15 to 16 which reads thus, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Furthermore, in Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 8, we see the following, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Indeed, the heathen nations that will be gathered and the aliens in the Holy Land will be the ones that are subject to the flames of the fury from the Lord. This is the judgment of the heathen. There is further confirmation of this in Malachi chapter 4 verse 1, which reads thus, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. The Brenton Septuagint translation makes it even clearer who are the proud that will be consumed as if in an oven. It reads as follows, for behold, a day comes, burning as an oven, and it shall consume them, and all the aliens, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, and the day that is coming shall set them on fire, saith the Lord Almighty, and there shall not be left of them root or branch. In this context, the aliens are the heathen that currently occupy the Holy Land. They and the other wicked heathen nations will face the indignation of the Most High in the day of the judgment of the heathen nations. In particular, out of all their transgressions against the Most High, the wicked heathen will be first judged for breaking the dietary laws of the Most High. We see this in Isaiah chapter 66 verses 17 to 18 which reads as follows, They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mist eating swine's flesh, and the abomination, and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Therefore, 
people of the other nations that set their own standards for righteousness and eat whatever they want will face the indignation of the Most High. Even the aliens that currently occupy the Holy Land will be judged. So if people of the other nations desire mercy, they too must keep the law, especially the dietary laws. What is the righteous diet according to the law? Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 reads as follows. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb and barren seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, every herb bearing seed, and the fruit of the tree yielding seed on the earth is lawful to consume. In fact, if you are a vegan that consumes only this category of food, then you are a step ahead in the game. Not only are you probably more healthy than most, but you are also leading a righteous lifestyle. But for those who are not vegan, let us look at the edible beasts of the field according to the law. In Leviticus chapter 11 verses 2 to 3, we see the following. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parted the hoof, and is cloven-footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. So the edibility criteria for beasts are that they must part the hoof and be cloven-footed, and secondly, they must chew the cud. But what exactly does parted the hoof and is cloven-footed means? Well, according to the American Museum of Natural History, a cloven hoof, cleft hoof, divided hoof, or split hoof is a hoof split into two toes. This is found on members of the mammalian order, Artiodactyla. Examples of mammals that possess this type of hoof are cattle, deer, pigs, antelopes, gazelles, goats, and sheep. Using that definition as a guide, we see that when we compare the goat to a horse, for example, that the goat's hoof are indeed parted into two separate toes, but the horse's hoof is only partially parted. Therefore, the horse does not meet criteria number one. Again, in comparing the hoofs of the pig and the camel, the camel does not meet criteria number one, but the pig does. Now let's take a closer look at criteria number two. According to the book, The Ruminant Animal Digestive Physiology and Nutrition, cod is a portion of food that returns from a ruminant stomach to the mouth to be chewed for a second time. More accurately, it is a ball-like mixture of food and saliva composed of semi-degraded food regurgitated from the recticulorumen of a ruminant. Cud is produced during the physical digestive process of rumination. So a beast that chews its cud is one that regurgitates its food from the recticulorumen and chews on it. These beasts are called ruminants. Moreover, ruminants are large hoofed herbivores, grazing or browsing mammals that are able to acquire nutrients from plant-based food by fermenting it in a specialized stomach prior to digestion, principally through microbial actions. The process, which takes place in the front part of the digestive system, also known as the rumen, and therefore is called foregut fermentation, typically requires the fermented ingester, known as cud, to be regurgitated and chewed again. Here are two examples of beasts that chew their cud. They are both mammals that are herbivores. However, between the goat and the camel, the goat is the only one that is edible according to the law because unlike the camel, the goat parted the hoof and is cloven-footed. Thus, the goat meets both criteria for edibility. But these beasts are not edible. The horse, even though it chews the cud, the hoofs are not split into two toes. In addition, even though the pig is cloven-footed, it does not chew the cud. It's not even a herbivore. Finally, the camel does chew the cud, but the hoofs are not split into two toes. To be edible, the beast must meet both criteria for edibility. Moreover, Leviticus chapter 11 verses 4 to 8 reads thus, Nevertheless, ye shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof. As the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, 
and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch, they are unclean to you. Indeed, clean beasts of the field must chew the cud, and have split hoofs that are divided into two toes, and all beasts that are not clean are unclean. Here's a list of common clean and unclean beasts. I like to highlight the pig in the list as many popular meats consumed by Israelites such as bacon, ham, lard, sausage, and pepperoni are all unclean and unlawful foods. I hope that those watching this video find it in their heart to repent and stop eating these abominable foods. Now we'll take a look at edible water creatures according to the law. Leviticus chapter 11 verses 9 to 12 reads as follows. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but he shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. Therefore, all lawful sea and river creatures must have fins and scales to be edible. The fish in the pit here to the left is a perfect example. Any water creature that does not have fins and scales is unclean to eat according to the law. This would include popular foods such as crabs, octopus, lobster or crawfish, shrimp, and catfish. We'll now take a look at the category of non-edible fowls according to the dietary law. In Leviticus chapter 11 verses 13 to 20, we see the following. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, and the ossifrage, and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite, after his kind. Every raven, after his kind and the owl, and the nighthawk, and the cockow, and the hawk, after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the stork, the heron, after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. All fowls that creep going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. The bat is classified as a fowl by the Most High. The bat and every fowl after its kind that creep going on all four limbs is an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Some of you might be thinking, bats don't walk on all fours. Well, watch this. Now we'll take a look at edible insects according to the law. In Leviticus chapter 11 verses 21 to 23, we see the following. Yet these may ye eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind, but all other flying creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. So flying creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap, can be interpreted as flying insects that actually have six legs, four of which that are primarily used for crawling and two additional legs that are jointed legs for hopping on the ground. These jointed legs are typically the hind legs. This criteria describes the following insects, the beetle, the grasshopper, and the locust. An example of an insect that does not meet the criteria would be the praying mantis because it does not have jointed legs for hopping on the ground. You may have also noticed that all the edible insects mentioned are herbivores while the praying mantis is not a herbivore. In conclusion, all Israelites that hope to be part of the righteous remnant that make it out of the wilderness and enter the Holy Land must keep all the laws of the Most High, especially the dietary laws. 
even the repentant heathen that seeks mercy in the day of judgment must keep the dietary laws. The Most High gave very detailed instructions on what to eat and what not to eat concerning plants, animals, and insects. And finally, you must fear the Most High and keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. This is the only path to follow. Every other path leads to destruction.